It's Walt Disney World Clicks. I'm your host, Kevin. We've got a monster update, so let's get started at IAPA. Now, this is the amusement park and theme park industry annual convention. As you can see, it's full of uh, trade show type things and vendors and booths and so forth, showing off what they have to uh, bring for the masses, for uh, amusement buyers to buy for next year, like upside down bikes, it's almost like a carnival ride, or fans that you use to cool off your patrons as they walk around the walkways when it's dark, uh, when it's hot. Uh, and then when it's dark, you can uh, have the um, laser maze, uh, where people have to climb through the lasers. So it's really just a bunch of fun experiences. It's open to the public. You have to pay to go. Then you get to see things that are new and upcoming, like this, the trackless robotic arm ride, a KUKA arm. So this is like the Harry Potter ride combined with the uh, Go Anywhere technology There's not just on track. Uh, and so perhaps we'll see rides like that coming in the future. Including technologies uh, at the show, there are things that are already out there, like the spinning roller coaster. It's actually there for you to ride or to wander around the playground equipment or jump on the inflatables, especially if you're the kids. For the grown-ups, this one was new, the Zero Shock. Um, it's a 21-foot free fall. You climb up the platform here and just jump like a stunt person onto this big inflatable uh, area down below. It's, it's open for anyone to do and to try. Shooting galleries, laser effects, uh, some more of the animatronics that you might find in a horror show or horror uh, haunted house kind of place. Dancing attractions, as you see there. Uh, this is kind of more advanced, like Turtle Talk with Trek, uh, Turtle Talk with Crush, uh, where the performer does certain things and it's captured, and then the <clears throat> the animated character uh, it looks like this on the screen. This, so this is the backstage view of that, obviously. A different four-person uh, air hockey. We've seen some of that before. <clears throat> Upcoming video games are sometimes included at IAPA. So there's a Transformers game with a, a big show booth, uh, as you can see, big showy items in the booth. Plants vs. Zombies stand-up game. So uh, those of you who know the game, you're playing as the pea shooter, shooting the zombies coming in. Uh, Rail Rush seemed to be like Temple Run, so perhaps this is going to be the next big thing. Uh, and then this is kind of a wraparound screen, uh, which uh, apparently is not common in the United States yet. It's like your own personal Soren, where you're up close, and in this case being a, a fighter pilot. So that was a neat thing to see. They have new technologies there, or somewhat new technologies. This is a greaseless fryer, so air frying. Um, they show off the vendors who show off their, their wares, like they make theme park maps, those of you who are into that sort of thing. Uh, even the costumes that you could use for walk around characters, and we'll come back to a new version of the costumes in a minute. You can sometimes even meet the designers themselves. Now, this is Gardner Holt. Uh, he does a lot of Disney's animatronics. He's not an Imagineer directly, but they um, they work with him <clears throat> to update and um, and to repair a lot of Disney's animatronics, and sometimes build them to, to begin with. Different shooting gallery configuration treehouse type um, atmosphere just to give you a sense for how much of a show this is rather than just a vendor thing uh, show dancing lights or dancing waters in this case uh, this was kind of big this year a lot of simulator rides with um, guns so you're shooting on screen uh, there was a couple of those that we sampled they're all very interesting and then you have uh, not just these decorations, but some different kinds of ticket-based games. This one's kind of very Plinko-based, as you can see. Uh, some new pinball machines coming out. The Star Trek one was a particular draw uh, because it was new and because it had a lot of different interesting effects. A 3D photo booth where you get a lenticular made for you. Some interesting floor paneling here that's uh, filled with liquids that move around as you step on them. So that was an interesting idea, especially when lit up. Uh, this is obviously for miniature golf. It goes up this tubes and then plinkos its way down. And that was interesting as well. A lot of animatronics are available for you to look at and get up close to. Uh, and then there are some photo opportunities. You can take a picture with the Simpsons on their couch. These are those other mascots I mentioned. Now, you can tell by the poses, they're actually humans inside there. They just look like robots. An interesting reversal of the traditional idea. Speaking of new ideas on old things, this, um, this is kind of a Soren type ride. So this would be a dome, and this is a new method for lifting up uh, the folks so that they go from a sitting position um, to uh, kind of a more vertical position right next to the dome. That one was actually there last year in IAPA. Now there are lots and lots of models when you go to IAPA. They have to show off what their attractions are, uh, the things that they've designed, and uh, if you're into model making or having a look at uh, what the model builders do when they sell a new ride, sell a new attraction, then the models are going to be one of the favorite parts for you, I think, going to IAPA, just looking around at um, the visualizations that they have before they even build the thing. Sometimes the theme doesn't make it in, even though the ride itself or attraction itself would get built, it wouldn't be with that theme. 
Now you might be asking what this water slide is doing with these colored dots on them. Well, it turns out this is called slide boarding. The idea being that your board becomes a game system. You see like the up, down, left, right, and the, the four, uh, di four digital buttons. So you would be in a tube, let's say, and then a colored light would come along and you're supposed to push a button to catch all the lights, so to speak. The idea is to turn it into a game, and you can do that as you saw a moment ago in an open air one as well, not just one that's enclosed and has these digital effects. We saw the Dippin' Dots booth had a couple of new flavors, um, rock and cherry ice that had um, pop rocks in it basically, and a kettle corn, which was a remarkably accurate flavor. Funnel sticks, a different kind of uh, twist on funnel cakes. They were even demonstrating some pizza technologies, so different kinds of ovens. And then they have to, it wouldn't be IAPA without these oversized props kind of everywhere around. This one in particular fooled me. As I walked by, uh, this moved with me. It was a 3D effect caused by bumping outwards, uh, in this case in, tr in uh, triangles, that uh, really made your eye feel like it was a completely 3D lenticular image, but it wasn't. It was actually just a regular thing, uh, but it was in 3D relief. Jump shot combining the best of volleyball and basketball and trampolines. This is an interesting thing. I expect we'll see this in the park sometime soon. It's a transparent LCD, so you can have effects go over the top of it, and then you can see a sign behind it, let's say. And so uh, you could have people get scared as they walk by. Now, we also stopped by the Nickelodeon Hotel near Walt Disney World. Uh, this is for the Let It Snow um, festival, I guess that you would call it. It's an outdoor area entertainment that is uh, free for the people staying at the Nickelodeon Hotel. It does snow, as you can see there. And they have a new show, Celebrate Nickmas. It's a stage show. Uh, like many things at Nickelodeon, it's, aim it's aimed at a certain audience, a certain demographic of younger kids, um, but absolutely interesting with the characters that they have, Diego, Dora, SpongeBob, and so forth. Now we stopped by Universal at one point as well. This is City Walk we're looking at where the environment store has been removed, as you can tell. And the Pasta More construction has revealed a red oven uh, pizza bakery. And so the Pasta More is still there, but it's only sit down now around the corner. Back to Disney. We are at a Disney resort here where I saw some snacks for sale. Uh, these are plastic um, food items, so plastic gifts, about $5 each. That seemed an interesting new thing to me. Over to the Magic Kingdom, where, as you can see at the end of this tunnel, is the Jingle Cruise poster. So the Jingle Cruise uh, is the Jungle Cruise overlay, only here for a few weeks. Over to the Seven Dwarfs Mine Coaster. We're going to do this one in a couple of stages. There's the overview and then a look into the first peephole. As you can see, uh, it's starting to get covered up now by the, uh, the theming, and so you won't be able to see too much more under there. Um, we can still see some bear tracks here and going around the corner there, um, and then maybe this drop around the corner there, but uh, not, not clear what an overview would look like anymore from that vantage point. Now around the back side of the mountain, this Disney Vacation Club booth has opened since the last time I've been there. Uh, it does have a lot of theming, as you can see, themed to a wood carver shop, all of the tools over here. And we'll have a look at the close-up carvings that they've done. Uh, and that's where the booth itself is, where they would talk to you about DVC. So these are what some of the drawings look like. Is it me, or does this look a little bit like a hidden Mickey uh, on this face? It's obviously not meant to be a Mickey figurehead, but it looks to me like Mickey Mouse ears. There's what more of the carvings look like. And then you have this wonderful drawing um, in the back of the cast members now. It's called Destinations of the World, and I'm not sure how obvious it is, but we've got things like the wonder and the dream and the fantasy and the magic. Well, those are the Disney Cruise Line ships, obviously. And this appears to be the artist's name, RLB. Be interested if anyone can tell me who RLB actually is. Some close-ups of that same mural. I uh, wasn't sure entirely if this is meant to be a tribute. This guy kind of looks like Mr. Toad to me, and I'm not sure what to make of this. It may be kind of a Beatles hairstyle. Maybe it looks like it's supposed to be someone specifically. Now, all of these pinned-up places are places you can go with DVC, where they've got a presence, and you can uh, find DVC hotels. That's what the map is there to do. There's a couple of other pieces of artwork without as many uh, inside jokes scattered around that same DVC area. And then, as promised, the second half of the <clears throat> mine train update. Again, we're being blocked from the view increasingly by the railing and by this, this tool cart, I think. <clears throat> you can see uh, the curve we've been looking at for some time. And there's a new railing that's gone in over here, <clears throat> and a different uh, roof line is taking shape over there as well. 
The Pinocchio Village House has reopened its um, main entrance. It was a sort of side entrance lately while it's been under construction. This whole patio area has been redone here, as has this bench wall over on one side of the Village House entrance. Now, the limited time magic uh, this past week was giving away a Jingle Cruise poster. This was on heavy cardstock. And it was like 13 inches by 19 inches. So it was a wonderful thing to give away to people at the Jungle Cruise. This is where they were stationed at the exit to Jungle Cruise. They told me at the end of uh, Saturday, at the end of Sunday, that they were now sold out. So it's uh, perhaps that they really are sold out. At the exit to Big Thunder, perhaps you've been here before, this is um, the smoking area, but it has been expanded. So you can tell by looking at the walkways that the pieces of it are brand new and newly available. And I don't remember seeing these gold nugget uh, props, or perhaps they were different props before. So they've, uh, they've obviously done some freshening up in the area as well. It's a really expansive area now. It's got that upper walkway, this middle walkway, and then this front patio. So they've got quite a bit of space, and it is wheelchair friendly that um, there is a wraparound pathway around the side where you can get in wheelchairs and ECVs. Now, the Move It, Shake It, Celebrate It parade has added something new. This was the first weekend where they took away the confetti and streamers and used these lighting effects, sort of daytime uh, fireworks here captured for you at nighttime, or almost nighttime, uh, at the very conclusion of the show. That makes a lot less mess for them to clean up. Now, I haven't been to Backstage Magic with Mickey since uh, Mickey has gotten a new costume uh, and now is a talking Mickey. So the Talking Mickey um, does games with people. It's prearranged. It doesn't um, answer back and forth on the fly. Uh, and it is still a blinking Mickey, of course, but as you can see, his mouth is moving around from closed to open. Uh, and it was actually a pretty wonderful effect, I have to say. I thought it worked pretty well, and uh, I think it blows people away in a positive way most of the time. While we're at the Magic Kingdom, here are a couple of t-shirts that caught my eye. This one in particular looked new to me, Space Mountain and Space Mountain and a third Space Mountain. In the Magic Kingdom, we've been seeing new costumes in Fantasyland. We showed you the attractions previously. This is what the merchandise costume looks like for men, and the merchandise costume as it looks like for women. Then this is what the costume looks like men and women uh, at the new uh, foods costume, uh, again, back at the Pinocchio Village House. Now, this just looks like a Disney cup, doesn't it? But if you take a closer look in this area here, let's just switch pictures, maybe make it a little bit more obvious. Can you see this faint outline of a rectangle? And maybe this outline of an outside rectangle still in white. What we are looking at is a sticker with an RFID tag on the bottom of a paper cup. We are at the Pop Century where you need these stickers and the RFID to turn on the soda machines. There's a reader in the base down here. So these are what the bases look like that uh, will not allow the soda to dispense, the machine dispense soda, unless the RFID tag is uh, recognized. And it knows how many refills you're allowed to have. I think it was four or five or something in, in the case of an hour. Um, and it doesn't let you have refills too fast. So it, it takes a few minutes before your refill is ready. So you can have a, a, only a certain amount of refills and it knows how big your cup is because this, this diagram moves up as you go. So you can't just sit there and hold a gallon jug underneath it and, until it turns off. It only is going to dispense that much soda for you. We are also at SeaWorld this past weekend. SeaWorld has got some wonderful Christmas decorations scattered around the park. They really go all out at SeaWorld. They've got the Polar Express, uh, which is an overlay to the Wild Arctic experience, and lots of decorations inside there. And of course, the ride itself is new. This is where uh, one of their Christmas trees is, and the Meet Santa Claus opportunity is. And then since we've been there, the Lakeside Panini Bistro has opened up. This is near the Sharks exhibit. And then this was brand new for me. <clears throat> so in the waterfront area, I'm sorry, in the marketplace area, which is uh, right next to the dolphin nursery, uh, you've got a new train exhibit. And so this entire zone here has been given over to a train exhibit, almost on the scale, really, of the um, one in Epcot's Germany Pavilion. Uh, and they've got you know, three or four different trains running. <clears throat> Some of them are elevated, as you can see. And it's a big exhibit. You can walk through the middle of it. Uh, and I thought it was a, just a wonderful, remarkable thing. And um, I'm happy that they did it. And I hope that Central Florida Railroad modelers come back every year to do the same thing. So further in the marketplace area, they've got some games where you can play and win some prizes, characters for you to meet, booths for you to buy uh, food and drinks, especially um, warm things, some more of their um, famous nighttime decorations. They really go all out decorating this park in lots of different areas. We didn't get all of them in this photo update for you. And then this was kind of new, a new show here in the um, marketplace area where they involve the audience <clears throat> with this uh, villagers, I guess, and then they choose uh, a young child to ring the bell and then turn on the sea of trees behind. <clears throat> the Sea of Trees being uh, the wonderful show they put on in the middle of the lagoon there 
kind of like um, dancing lights, I guess. <clears throat> More of the decorations throughout. And this one is the waterfront area, and you see that they make it snow there as well. All included with the price, as is this wonderful nativity show, A Wondrous Night, uh, which uses live animals and something to see if you've never seen it before. So here we are, back to our game. Where in Walt Disney World was this? Last week's one got guessed by many of you. It was indeed the Crow's Nest. as a little shop in Adventureland that is now home to a Pirate's Adventure, Treasures of the Seven Seas. <clears throat> so this is this week's Where in Walt Disney World was this? Obviously the picture has been cropped. I'm not showing you everything there is to show you, uh, but I hope and think that might be enough for many of you to guess what exactly we're looking at here. So where in Walt Disney World was this? Leave your answers in the comments, and we'll find out next week if you were right or wrong. That does it for this week. We thank you, as always, for showing up and giving us your attention, your eyeballs, and uh, your guesses in those comments. We'll catch you next time.